Greetings from the Oregon Rainforest. I'm Bruce Gray. Today I'm clad in Vintage Tropic Joes, just for those of you who are following at home. We are going to be covering the FBI Ballistic Research Facilities report on a P320 that was implicated in a shooting uh, with injury. We are also going to be looking at the conclusions that they come to and how they arrived at those conclusions vis-a-vis -vis something that is popularly known as the Seardrop Test or what the FBI gunsmiths referred to as the striker lock safety test. Since SIG won the modular handgun contract in 2017, no other developments have rocked the P320's reputation harder than the double tap that it received in July. First, the FBI's BRF report, and then the tragic death of an airman. The gun tubers seized upon these stories and just ran with them like uh, dogs with stolen sausages, in my opinion. This all started a cascade of P320 bans by ranges, law enforcement departments, training outfits, and retailers, leaving P320 owners pretty much dismissed, dispossessed, and frustrated. It looked to many folks who have heard nothing but negativity regarding their P320s that the skeptics finally had their smoking gun. The FBI proved that a P320 fired without a trigger pull was the common headline. But was that really true? Well, it certainly seemed plausible. After all, given the reputation of the FBI and their ballistics research facility, there perhaps was never going to be a better opportunity for someone to be able to examine a pistol of a known provenance with a chain of custody in an expert way. And indeed, the FBI gunsmiths did come up with a number of different things that they saw in the pistol that were notable and that from their perspective were very much worth commenting on, as we have already stated. But we're going to focus now just on the methodology they used to test the integrity of the striker lock. Pages 27 to 31 of the BRF report detail what the gunsmiths at Redstone did to determine whether the striker lock could in fact be pushed out of the way or defeated through some motion of the grip module friction uh, or some other factor short of a pull of the trigger. The test they used for that there's something called the sear drop test that has been popularized by various different gun tubers, some of whom are perhaps a little over the top, and in particular by a fellow in a trench coat who has actually advocated no less than cutting the sear safety cam feature off the sear in a very mistaken belief that that would somehow make the pistol safer. In reality, the purpose of the sear safety cam is to support the sear using the mass and springing of the trigger bar. And because the sear has far less mass and no mechanical advantage to exert against the trigger bar and no force by which to do so, it actually does work very, very well to keep the sear and the striker connected. Our chief of gunsmithing and general manager of Grey Guns, Keith Hosey, has an excellent video on this on our YouTube channel, the Grey Guns YouTube channel that I very much would like you to look at in order to be able to get more information. Here I'm modeling the technique used by the BRF gunsmiths in which I take a Glock tool, pass it between the slide rear cap and the sear housing in a space I provided, and then by pushing straight down on the back of the sear, I'm going to disengage the striker and allow it to go forward. The problem is that you can also drive the trigger bar past the point at which the striker lock would be defeated, something that doesn't happen in any kind of ordinary circumstances. Using Grey Gun's exclusive potato vision imaging technology, we can show you for the first time in detail how the sear safety cam feature and the striker lock interact. This, we believe, is a groundbreaking moment for science. In future videos, we're going into exquisite detail to demonstrate the function of the striker lock and demonstrate the means by which we've attempted to jam it, gum it, defeat it, or disable it. Suffice to say for now that the sear does not have the mechanical advantage nor the pendular mass to be able to push the trigger bar and the trigger out of the way and get them to defeat the striker lock through the safety lever. Quite to the contrary, again, the purpose of the sear safety cam feature, that little projection on the rear of the sear that you see, is to connect the trigger bar and the sear and keep them stuck together. A Glock tool, not in my SIG. Introducing the Grey Gun Sear Depressor 3000, the right tool for the wrong job. Not available in stores, restrictions apply. We're going to use this to precisely and carefully drop the sear without overdriving it. 
So that's the story of the SEER safety cam. It's understandable to me uh, how the folks at the FBI ballistics research facility and for that matter, a whole bunch of different YouTubers and influencers missed how that SEER safety cam function could give them a false indication of some kind of a failure when in reality, um, it's not the way it was designed to work. And their testing actually, in fact, verifies that it's working exactly as it was intended. But, you know, in all fairness, it took me a while to figure it out too. I spent a lot of time thinking through how that mechanism works, what the various different uh, permutations and effects on the pistol it might have. Again, this isn't an F-22 or a nuclear submarine, so it's not like there's an endless number of potential permutations, but still, there's some complexity and some nuance involved. So it's completely understandable, and I'm not throwing any kind of shade at anybody for having missed it. That said, you know, if you don't believe me, uh, you can talk to this schmuck. The guy with the mustache invented the SEER safety cam in 2016 as a way of helping to support the SEER, as well as to assure full reset under various different conditions with light trigger pulls for competition and so forth. If you want some light reading, go ahead and check out the patent. So the bottom line to all of this is that Phil Strader, myself, and other people that have an interest in setting this straight are fighting a little bit of an uphill battle against an established narrative that was formed under, well, if you will, false pretenses, although certainly not deliberately. We're hoping that the FBI will come out with a retraction or clarification of their previous document, because I think that would go a long way toward allowing us to accurately portray the manner in which the pistol works so that people can look at things objectively and make up their own mind without undue influence. That said, look forward to my next video, and God bless you all. Thank you.